Hi, my name is Jessica Thalen and I'm the Save to Win Program Manager for CU Solutions Group. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the Save to Win Data Check Tool. This check tool was created as an aid to assist credit unions in identifying data errors in their monthly data files and will give you the opportunity to correct those errors prior to uploading your files. This tool mimics how our drawing reports identifies errors and when used consistently will save your credit union time each month and will be a great resource for housing all of your program's data. Before I begin, let's make sure you've completed these three steps. One, pull your current monthly reports from your data processor. If you have your previous month's data, you'll want to make sure that you have these handy as well. Two, make sure your monthly reports are formatted to match the requirements as listed in the Appendix 3 Data Requirements document, which can be found on the administrative site under Implementation Documents. Three, download the data check tool and instructions from the admin site and save them to your computer. All steps completed? Great, let's begin. When you open the data check tool, it will look like this except for yours will be blank. I have already added a bunch of fake data for this session to show you how to resolve your common data errors. On the main dashboard tab, which you'll notice here at the bottom, you will see highlighted columns in pink which show that you have errors and each of those correspond to the months in which they occur. You can also see errors in each monthly data tab below which we'll talk about in more detail in just a bit. You may also notice that there's a previous December tab and also tabs from January all the way to December for the current month. In order for this tool to work properly, you will need to copy and paste data from all previous months and the last month of the previous year, if applicable. So for example, if you started the program in January, you will include the December data file from last year. If you started the program in April, you will include the March data file from last year. If this is the first year that you started the program, just supply the current year's data files. Once the data is copied into all appropriate tabs, check your current month tab for errors, which will be flagged in red under columns T through W. If you want to go back and view all of the data errors in all months, you can click the dashboard tab and that will take you to each corresponding month that has errors. Now that we know where to look for errors, let's go through each type of error and the best practices on how to resolve them. The first type of error we're going to look at is an in-month problem. So we can tell on our data check tool that this one occurs in the February file. We're going to go ahead and scroll to the February tab so we can see which record is assigned to and look at that. So the in-month error is going to identify a record where a previous or current month's balance do not reconcile with the deposits and or withdrawals that actually occurred within this current month. What you'll want to make sure to include is any dividends should be recorded in the deposit column and any withdrawal fees should be included in the withdrawal column. If neither of these situations is present, then you may need to repull your report or manually change the record to reflect the transactions that actually transpired in the account for this month. So when we take a look at this account, we will notice that they started with the previous month balance of zero, they made $150 in deposits, but their month end balance is 100. So either the month end balance is wrong and it should be 150, or the total deposits is wrong and should be 100. What you'll wanna do is go back to your member's account, go look for the record to see what they actually deposited in their true month end balance and change accordingly. So I went ahead and done that and I realized that, yep, my member actually did make 150 in deposits and for some reason our system didn't record that and I need to manually change that. You will notice that that error disappeared from the in month tab and if you go back to the dashboard, you'll notice that it is no longer in the February tab as well. The next type of error we're going to look at is a between month problem. This is going to identify a record where the previous month balance in your current file does not match the month end balance in your previous file. So let's take a look at the February tab because that is where the error occurred and we notice, okay, here's the between month error and it's occurring for this record for John Smith. So according to his February balance, he shows a previous month balance of 150, he made 50 in deposits and his month end balance is 200. So the math is right but it's not adding up between each month. So let's take a look at his January record and see what he ended with. So John Smith in January had a $25 balance, he made 100 in deposits and he ended with 100. Well in the February tab we actually have him starting with 150 so there is a discrepancy of $50 somewhere that's not adding up between the months. So I went ahead and did the look up at the member's account 
and I noticed that, yep, he actually did start with 100 as his previous month balance. So we're going to change that. And I noticed that his deposits actually happened to be 100 too. So that should make everything add up, and there goes the error. Again, you can check on the dashboard, and that has been resolved there as well. Another reason why you may see a between month problem is that if a deposit happened to be made on the first or last day of the month, sometimes the effective date is going to be different than the post date. So you want to make sure that you're checking that each month when you pull your reports and format them correctly each month. The next type of error we're going to look at is the open balance error. This error is going to identify a new account record that did not exist in a previous month data file and shows a balance other than zero in the previous month balance column. So let's take a look at this record in January. So we can see here's the opening balance record and it's for John Smith. We know that he just opened his account in January so he did not have a previous month balance. So we need to check that here, and there's the first mistake. We have 25 in, which is the opening balance requirement. However, we want to change that number to zero so that they're getting the credits that they earned for their drawing. So now that we've added that, all of the other balances and deposits match up, and the error is resolved. Another reason you may experience an open balance error is if you have a social security number from one month to the next that may be different. So if a number is transposed or a member changes their number perhaps due to a technical error, you'll want to check to make sure if that is the situation and you'll want to make sure that you notify your product administrator. The next type of error, when we go back to the dashboard that we want to take a look at, is the disappearing records. So for this one, we have three different types of errors that can occur, and we'll talk about that in just a sec. A disappearing record error is going to identify a record that was included in your previous month file, but does not show up in your current month file. So the system is trying to determine whether or not this account disappeared or if it's a true closed account. So let's take a look at the closed account, which is noted in the February file. One thing to note is that when you go to the February tab for the disappearing record errors, you'll notice that nothing is highlighted. And the reason for that is because there's no record in February. So on the dashboard it shows that it's in February, but it actually will show up in the January file because there is no record for it to be signed to in February. So we can look at this record, Jane Smith. She has an account in January, but for some reason doesn't show up in February. So we want to take a look, see if the member did close the account, and then we'll note it properly in the record. What you want to make sure that you have for all closed accounts is that you need to note in the open balance column a C for closed and you want to make sure that the month end balance is zeroed down. So for example, if Jane Smith had her record in January, what we'll want to do is we'll copy her whole entire record all the way over to her social security number and we're going to paste that in February so that we can show that she closed her account. After you have successfully pasted the disappearing record into the current month file, you'll want to change the open status to show as close, which you will do with a C. You'll also then want to make sure that the month end balance shows zero. You may need to adjust any other data in those columns so that everything matches up so you don't receive an in-month balance error. Let's go back to the dashboard and we've gotten rid of that error. Now what we're going to take a look at is three different types of closed record errors and different types of errors that you'll receive based on the way that you close the account. So let's take a look at the March tab for this. So in this column B, we notice that we have each record that was improperly closed. The first improperly closed error is going to populate, when we just talked about, where your account does not show as closed and or the month end balance zero doesn't record zero. So to do this, just like we did before, you will change the account status to closed, and now that the month end balance is zero, that error is removed. The second type of error is a zero out balance error, and that occurs on this record. You'll receive this when the account's month balance is less than 25, but greater than zero and is marked as closed. So the system doesn't think that the account is closed properly. So we can see that the account has been marked as closed, but the month end balance doesn't show zero. So again, changing that to zero will remove that, and then you may need to check any other type of data errors to make sure that everything balances up. And lastly, we have a should be open record error. 
and this occurs when you have a month end balance that's greater than 25 but is marked as closed. So the system wants to know if this account is really open or it should be closed. So say that I went ahead and checked, yep, this account was closed and it's already marked with a C, so now I need to make sure that the month end balance is zero and change any other math to make sure that that error is removed. Once all the data has been corrected, go back to the dashboard so you can see if any errors are still populating with pink, which we notice that we do have a couple different ones, so we're gonna go back and change those just to make sure that we have a blank sheet. So let's take a look at the February tab. There happens to be a between month balance error in that column. So this is occurring for the disappearing record error that we just made changes for. So what we need to do is double check the previous month balance that she had in January, which we have noted as 25. And in her account, she ended with 50. So we need to make that change and mark it appropriately. So let's change that to 50. We'll say that she didn't make any deposits because I checked her account, it was closed. And then there's no withdrawals, and that should get rid of that. Going back to the dashboard, we still have a couple errors in March. So let's take a look at the March tab. We have an in-month problem and a between-month problem for this record right here. So let's take a quick look at the between month problem. Her previous month balance shows 100. Let's see what we have in February. So in February, she ended with 150. So that's what her start balance should be in March. So we'll change that. There was no deposits, no withdrawals. So her month end balance should be the same as what she started with. And that will get rid of that. And we checked to make sure her account was open. Okay, going back to the dashboard, we can see that all of the errors have been resolved. There's nothing highlighted in pink. Now we're ready to upload our data process. Now we're all set to save this file to your desktop. After you save it, you can begin the upload process. So what you wanna do is make sure you copy just the month that you're working with. So say our current month is March. We'll copy all of this data, B cell two, all the way over to the social security numbers, and we're gonna paste this into a brand new Excel sheet and save that as your comma delimited or .csv version. Once you have done that, then that's the file that you'll wanna to upload to the administrative website. Do not upload the entire data check tool. This is just for you to use to identify errors. What you'll wanna do is just upload the current file that you're working with so that those are the entries that will be included into the current month drawing. After you upload your monthly data file, check to make sure your members are receiving their appropriate markers in the file that is saved on the administrative website. Hopefully this tutorial gave you a better understanding of how to use the data check tool. As a reminder, this tool can be used for the entire program year, and by using this tool each month, you will cut down the amounts of time you spend on submitting new data files and will reduce the number of emails you receive pertaining to incorrect data. Before we end this session, I wanna leave you with a few helpful tips. One, if you don't remember how to resolve certain data errors, refer back to the data instructions guide, which will walk you through those troubleshooting steps and will tell you how to correct the errors. Two, if you enable changes to the data check tool, make sure you didn't accidentally change any of the formulas. If you experience a situation where your accounts are showing errors, the formulas in your data check tool may have been compromised. If this occurs, you will need to download a new check tool and copy all of your data from the old tool into the new one. And lastly, after all the data corrections have been made, don't forget to save the data check tool. Then you can copy the current file and save it as a comma delimited version. If you have any questions, feel free to call or email me. Thanks for watching.